The Alaska blackfish is a tough freshwater fish native to Arctic Alaska and eastern Siberia. It has a broad flattened head and a long slender body covered in black mottled patterning of various shades. It's common for adults to be around only 5 inches or about 12 centimeters, but it can reach up to 13 inches or about 33 centimeters. It has somewhat unusual fins with large rounded pectoral fins, a very long dorsal and anal fin set far back on the body, and a rounded tail fin. Males are identified by red-orange tinges on the edges of the dorsal, caudal, and anal fins. The Alaska blackfish is famous for its ability to breathe air. It essentially has a modified esophagus that lets it gulp atmospheric oxygen. This means that it can survive in oxygen-poor water in frozen conditions. In the wintertime, it often congregates under ice near breathing holes. Another remarkable trait of this fish is that it can nearly freeze solid and still survive. The Alaska blackfish just has several really cool adaptations for its really cold environment. It feeds on insect larvae and small invertebrates. It's native to drainages across much of western Alaska. The Alaska blackfish is also the only fish in its family native to North America. Fortunately, it's considered a species of least concern. In fact, it's even considered a food source for some. Its tolerance for the cold, its air breathing adaptations, and the way it can survive under the ice make the Alaska blackfish a truly remarkable Arctic freshwater fish. The chestnut lamprey is a jawless, eel-like fish native to central North America. With no paired fins or jaws, it instead has a round sucking mouth lined with rows of keratinized teeth. Adults reach up to about 15 inches or 38 centimeters in length. The body color is a tan or olive with a paler belly and fins. Chestnut lampreys are parasitic as adults. They attach by suction to larger fish and rasp out blood and body fluids with their teeth. Before this parasitic phase, they spend five to seven years as larvae buried in sandy stream bottoms. At this life stage, they filter feed on microscopic organisms. When they mature around seven to nine years old, they migrate upstream and spawn in gravelly shallows. Each female builds a nest by moving stones, releases thousands of adhesive eggs, and then both the male and the female die after spawning. The newly hatched larvae then drift downstream and begin their filter feeding juvenile stage. This species ranges from Canada's Hudson Bay and the Great Lakes watersheds down through the Mississippi River Basin and to the Gulf drainages. This fish is found in clear rivers, large streams, and lakes where host fish like trout or sturgeon are most available. The chestnut lamprey is primarily nocturnal, hiding during the day and emerging at night. Its conservation status is also currently indicated as a species of least concern. This is a truly strange and misunderstood native fish of North America. Hey everybody, I've got some exciting news I want to share real quick. So two days ago, I launched a second channel, and this channel is going to be focused more on hiking and exploring and camping, hunting, just all those other awesome outdoor activities that I love that um, I'm not really sharing on this fishing channel. So if you like that kind of stuff, I would really, really appreciate it if you go check that out. I uploaded my first video, and um, I'm actually going to give you a sneak peek of that here. This is what I've got here. It's just a big lead weight. Should get me down there pretty quick. So if you're a fan of this channel, it would really mean a lot to me if you went over to that channel and subscribed. That would just be super helpful. I'm gonna link it up here. Um, the video and the channel. The channel will be in the description below. So thank you so much. I really appreciate your support and back to the strange and interesting fish. The Montezuma swordtail is a colorful live bearing fish from warm streams of northeastern Mexico. Males reach about three inches in length or seven centimeters plus a long sword-like extension of the lower tail fin which can be up to six inches or 15 centimeters making it well over double its body length. Females are slightly larger in body size, but lack the extended tail ornament. Adult males are brilliant yellow-green with dark spots. The tail is held nearly horizontal unlike most other swordtail species whose tails are angled downwards. 
Montezuma swordtails inhabit fast-flowing, well-oxygenated streams in the Panuco River Basin of Mexico. Females carry fertilized eggs internally and give birth to batches of live young, typically 15 to 50 fry. They can do this about every month under good conditions. First described in 1899 and named after the Aztec Emperor Montezuma, this fish is popular in the aquarium trade and is not currently known to be threatened in the wild, though data on the current conservation status is a bit lacking. The least chub is a tiny minnow endemic to Utah's isolated west desert, though it was recently discovered to exist in Idaho as well, making biologists reconsider the extent of its range. It is the sole member of its genus, and it's the smallest of Utah's native chub species, reaching only 1 to 2 inches, or 3 to 6 centimeters. Its back and upper sides are olive green to steel blue, with a faint golden stripe that runs from the upper end of the gill cover to the base of the tail. The lower sides and belly can be golden, and the fins are pale yellow. When spawning, males take an orange-red flush on the belly and lower sides. The least chub has a slender, somewhat compressed body and a slightly forked tail. It has large eyes and a terminal mouth. Today, only a few isolated spring complexes support wild populations of this fish. Through my position with the Utah DNR, I was actually privileged to help with several least chub surveys this past year out in Utah's West Desert. And the places these fish are found are really quite extraordinary. It's thought that the least chub was once found in the entire Bonneville Basin, but they are now mostly restricted to remote isolated desert springs, many of which are connected underneath the earth and just have a tiny exposed opening. These fish are tolerant to the poor alkaline conditions of Utah's West Desert and tend to do pretty well out there unless disturbed by introduced species. The least chub feeds mainly on algae and tiny aquatic invertebrates, including mosquito larvae. The introduction of mosquito fish in the Bonneville Basin is thought to be responsible for the extirpation of least chub across much of their native range. The least chub is a federally protected species and listed as endangered. State biologists maintain several captive refuge populations as a safeguard for the species. Despite its tiny size, the least chub plays an important ecological role in its native ecosystems. The Arctic char is a cold water salmonid that thrives in Arctic and subarctic habitats. Closely related to brook trout, lake trout, and dolly varden, this species is extremely variable in size. Some populations consist of small dwarf char that are only 3 inches long, while other populations produce giant char, averaging 12 to 20 inches or 30 to 50 centimeters. There are record char that have been reported to have been over 4 feet long, or over a meter, though such giants are very rare. Typically most char caught by anglers are in the 5 pound range. The back of the arctic char is usually green to olive or brown, and the sides and belly can turn a brilliant orange, pink, or red, especially in spawning males. Arctic char occupy very cold waters of the northern regions in which they live. Some may live in deep glacial lakes or rivers all year, while others migrate out to sea. This species has a virtually circumpolar distribution, found in Alaska, northern Canada, Greenland, Iceland, Scandinavia, and Russia. Spawning always occurs in freshwater over gravelly river or stream beds. These long-lived fish serve as top predators in their lake or river ecosystems. Arctic char are a highly prized fish by anglers and have been a traditional food source for the indigenous Arctic peoples. Globally, it remains common and is a species of least concern. Catching the Arctic char for me just seems like an absolutely surreal experience that I hope to have someday. The Ozark bass is a small fish found only in the clear rivers of the Ozark Mountains, mainly the White River drainage in northern Arkansas and southern Missouri. It closely resembles its relative the rock bass, but it is its own separate species occupying its own limited range. This fish is olive to greenish gray, with many tiny black spots and speckling on its body. It also has notable large reddish eyes. Adults can reach a length of about 11 inches or 28 centimeters, but most are far smaller. Ozark bass live among rocks, submerged logs, or brush, usually in the pools of streams or slow runs in small to medium rivers. This species was only recognized as distinct from the rock bass in the 1990s. The Ozark bass is currently considered a species of least concern and is a popular local sport fish for those targeting smaller fish in the Ozarks. 
The long-nosed gar is a prehistoric-looking predatory fish found throughout much of eastern North America. It has a long torpedo-shaped body armored with hard diamond-shaped scales and an extremely elongated snout, being nearly three times the length of its head, the snout being filled with sharp, needle-like teeth. Adults typically range from 2 to 4 feet long, though big individuals can reach nearly 6 feet or 2 meters. This fish can weigh up to 55 pounds or 25 kilograms. The coloration is olive green to brown on top, fading to yellowish on the sides and belly, often with dark blotches or spots on the body and fins. Similar to the Alaska blackfish, long-nosed gar can also breathe air. They surface periodically to gulp air, allowing them to survive in oxygen-poor or stagnant waters. These gar are ambush predators. They feed mainly on smaller fish, lying in wait among weeds or logs, and striking sideways with a sudden snap of the snout. Spawning takes place in the spring, and females scatter many thousands of toxic adhesive eggs, which are poisonous if consumed. Long-nosed gar occur in lakes, slow rivers, and backwaters from southern Canada through the eastern U.S. down to the Gulf. The species is abundant overall and is a species of least concern. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you on the next one.